everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really, really well, and welcome to my July wrap up. No? <laughs> Hi everyone, hope you're all doing really well, and welcome to my August wrap up. So, I read about six books in August last month, so yeah, you know, it was a really, really good reading month. Um, this is my last month, it was my last month of holiday before I go back to university this, this, um, September. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how my book reading habits are going to change over the next couple of months as my time starts to fill up. But I had plenty of time to get a lot of reading done and I was actually also home at my dad's for a little bit cat sitting for him so I was able to just sit and read for quite a while. So I really, really enjoyed just having all that time to sit and read for ages. So yeah, without any further ado, here are the books that I have been reading. First up is City of Stairs. This is a book that I have been meaning to read for quite a while and thankfully I was able to read it for my... It was supposed to be for my July book club but I was running a little bit late so I didn't finish it until August. Um, but this is a really interesting story, it's sort of... Oh, and I've read it so long ago I actually can't really even explain what it's about properly. But you're basically following your main character who's almost like a sort of investigator for her home country and she's abroad and there's this ambassador in this country um, in, uh, in this sort of city that is a really really interesting city you know it used to be the seat of like all the different gods that used to exist but were killed by the country that our main character works for you know that there that country's kind of like the sort of ruling power at the moment and you're following her as she is investigating the death of the ambassador who was in one of the cities in this in sort of the main city where the gods used to kind of come and meet um that has all that history before kind of like the apocalypse and the cataclysm and things like that um Quite hard to explain to be honest, um, I've not really, I probably should have um, printed out uh, or written down a synopsis of this beforehand, but a really really interesting book and I definitely did enjoy it. I did feel that about once I got to the 30% mark I was really being like okay I really need something to happen now because I felt like it was just taking a little bit too long setting things up. But you know at, very very quickly after I started thinking that something pretty major happened and everything kind of went from there. I really really liked our, our main character, I thought she was really really interesting and I really liked her goals and motivations and how she grows and comes into her character arc as the book goes on. Um, and as well the mythology and the sort of mystery about the gods and what happened to them and how um, our main character's ancestor was able to kill them and stuff like that was just really really fascinating stuff like the world building in this book is absolutely phenomenal I really really enjoyed it and it was definitely a standout for me but overall I feel like you know some the plot was really really great but I just really didn't care enough about a lot of our characters and stuff and interestingly this is actually a series because when I finished it I thought it could have been ended as a standalone so I'm debating whether or not I'm actually going to continue the series or not because I enjoyed it so much as a standalone however I am really really curious to see where it would go as a series so a good one overall by a solid three stars. And then read A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. Now this is one I have been meaning to get to for a while. If you know, I absolutely loved Dead Gin and Chiron when I read, read that last year. And I read the second novella in the lead up to this book, Angel of Khan El Khalili, earlier in the year. And that just kind of solidified the hype that I had for this book. So I finally got around to reading it. It was everything I thought it was going to be. I really, really loved where this went and how it was inspired by the events of the sort of novellas leading up to it. I really loved where our main character goes in this, I really loved some of the partner she gets assigned. Um, if you don't know what the Dead Gene universe is, it's set in sort of, you know, early 1900s Cairo, and this is a version of Cairo that has not been colonised by, um, you know, by outside forces, and is very steampunk, and it also has um, gin and magic and angels running around due to um, some sort of ma ma mysterious man from about 30 40 years ago who did something that allowed all those magical creatures into the world through um cairo um and this is kind of following our main character fatma who is the who's a sort of investigator for the kind of like police division that deals with um all the magical sort of beings and she is following a case where there was um, a murder of a kind of brotherhood that worshipped that worship the man who brought magic into the world. And kind of once this murder ha happens, there starts being rumours that the man who, the man who um, came back, Al Jahiz, he's actually back and is um, going around and sort of causing revolutions and stuff. And everything kind of goes from there. It's absolutely fantastic. I really, really love the world building in this. I really love the characters in this. Um, I just I just managed to guess who the real villain was um, just towards the end because a lot of the villain a lot of the sort of mystery here is is this actually El Jahiz that is back or is this someone impersonating him and you're following Fatma and her partner um, Hadia as they are in investigating this case and you know there's just some really really interesting stuff and I was really interested in things about Jin and angels and just the world building as well and this is just so fantastic and I really just love how it is explored in Master of Jin. 
Um, obviously five stars, absolutely loved it and I can't wait for any sequels that might be coming to this. I then read Flameful by Rosario Munda, this is upside down, let's try that again. I then read Flameful by Rosario Munda which is a sequel to Fireborn and I, this was everything I wanted from a sequel to that book. I absolutely adored this one, you know Fireborn I read last year and you know it was just so, it blew me completely out of the water, I absolutely loved it. And I know it's taken me so long to get to Flamefall, but really I'm quite glad that it did, to be honest, because it allowed me to kind of then view this out of the kind of, oh my god, how amazing was Fireborn kind of light. So, while well, I absolutely love this one, I do feel it's not quite as good as Fireborn. It does suffer a little bit from feeling ever so slightly repetitive with some of the character arcs that you kind of see them going through. You know, you very much have, you know, the sort of conflict between Annie and Lee in the first book and their sort of mistrust, of, their deepening mistrust of one another is explored quite a lot in Fireborn and you kind of get, are under the impression that that is resolved by the end of Fireborn but it does still linger for quite a while in Flamefall and I really feel like I was just starting to be a bit done with them not quite trusting one another. So I really hope once we get to Fury Song, which I'm going to be reading this month, I really do hope that actually um, they're going to have moved past that because I feel if it comes up yet again I'm going to start feeling like it's a bit, feeling a bit repetitive. But Flamefall is just a really really great um, sequel. I really love the introduction of the character of Griff. I really like that we got to then see what's going on on the other side of this war and you get to kind of see how his people are treated and how they kind of are feeling towards things and then also like what their view is of our characters that we've gotten to know so far. What do they think of them? Like, you know, I absolutely loved Griff as well. He's such a great character and I really like that he's so fiery and feisty and isn't taking this lying down kind of thing despite the fact that you know his people are oppressed and stuff I just absolutely adored him um, I really like what, what Annie and Lee's characters ha have happening in this book as well you know I think they're really really interesting characters and I do like where, where this goes and I do like how it explores kind of you know um, how things are for Lee after revelations of certain secrets in, like, at the end of the last book and as well how he um, approaches kind of just different things that are happening in this in this um, sequel it was just overall a really really great idea and like you know it's all it's one thing I really love about this book series is just kind of you know they're trying to do their best they're trying to do what they think is right and like you know not everybody's getting everything right you know and just some really really great stuff again with a great criticism of the class system and kind of how it's no better than the, than the previous regime you know that's definitely a really interesting overarching theme I think on in this series is you know in the, in the aftermath of a re revolution how quickly is it going to be until things start coming back round again and people start and another revolution happens kind of stuff you know really really great stuff if you haven't read this series already i definitely highly recommend it it's so good and i do have a full spoiler free review for fireborn if you kind of want to go and watch that and get a bit more of my thoughts on the first book in this series but flamefall was just such a good follow-up i cannot wait for fury's on I then finally got through Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. Now I have been trying to read this since February, but yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a chunky book, you know, it's taking me quite a while to get through it. Um, I read Assassin's Apprentice and Royal Assassin last year, absolutely adored them, and Assassin's Quest, I would say, just kind of misses the mark a little bit. It's far longer than it needs to be, and I did have a lot more problems with this book than I have with any of the other books in the series. Molly as a character just serves absolutely nothing to this series apart from some mild character conflict that is it and I really just hate that that's all she does you know and I you know so I can't really say too much about this because obviously it is a third book in a series but I mean I did absolutely love the things that they do with the elderlings and what that actually means and you know what happens with Verity's character in this book and Fitz's character as well is really, really interesting I think the first half of it like the first sort of portion where he is with Night Eyes and stuff is a really, really fascinating idea. It's a fascinating, you know, exploration of what it means for the wit and the wit bonded animal to really be together. Um, and I feel like you kind of maybe lose a little bit of that by the end of the book. But, you know, I still really enjoyed that first half. And, uh, but I did just feel like it was a little bit repetitive, you know, because obviously Fitz is trying to get to somewhere and things and he keeps getting captured and brought back to somewhere and then he escapes and he gets some somewhere else and he gets captured again and he's gonna be like okay I got it the first time it's difficult for him to get to where he's trying to get to go you know it was just start, did start to feel a little bit kind of repetitive after a while um which you know in a book this long really starts to bug me because it really feels like it's almost like just being dragged out for the sake of it being dragged out um but yeah it was really, really great to see a lot of our returning characters and see kind of what their thoughts are in the aftermath of what happens at the end of Royal Assassin but I do just feel like as a conclusion it spends about, you know, this much getting to the conclusion and then, like, you know, that's when ev how everything gets resolved 
in like the smallest portion of the book and then all of a sudden everything's resolved and everything's fixed and you're like oh, oh, oh okay um what so you know the pacing of this and the sort of way everything was balanced definitely could do some work with some work to be honest but you know overall it's still a satisfying ending and I did enjoy it there's just some really weird stuff as well that happens in here that I read it and I was like I'm sorry what <laughs> and yeah as I said Molly the character really really just that serves absolutely nothing to the story. Yeah. I then read Sabriel, or Sabriel, I don't really know how to pronounce this, by Garth Nix, and this is kind of like further proof as to why I should try authors more than once, because I read The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix last year, and I really didn't like it, and I really, really didn't like the writing style in that book, and I don't know if that's just the way his style has developed over the years, or a ch certain choice he made for that book in particular. Because I absolutely loved Sabriel, Sabriel. I loved the writing in this, I loved the characters, I loved the pacing, I loved the plot, I loved the world building. Like, I have nothing but good say things to say about this book. I just absolutely adored it. It was really, really good. Um, really, really interesting idea. You know, you're following Sabriel, who is a sort of daughter of a necromancer, and she kind of is a w a away in this kind of boarding school and while she's waiting for her father to come visit her, instead of him coming to visit her, it's a sort of like messenger with his tools, with his ne necromancy tools, delivering them to her. And that to her says he must be either dead or trapped in the death realm, having with some necromancy that has gone wrong. And she needs to try and go and find out, is he actually dead or is there some way that she can bring him back? And that leads her to cross the wall from the sort of land that she's living in, into the kind of magical lands where she is from, to go and try and find her father and see if she can rescue him. I mean, I absolutely loved this. Um, it was just so, it was just so good. Like I said, I have nothing but good to say about it. I just loved the world building. I did feel like the romance and things was just a little bit. Eh, it didn't really need to happen, but you know, it didn't take up too much time in the book, sort of thing. It didn't completely dominate, so I didn't like it too much. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. I and I was really surprised actually, because like I said, I read Garth Nix before and I really didn't enjoy it. I seem to remember trying to read this like way back in school and I just couldn't quite get into it. So it's really, really nice that I was able to re read this so quickly and just enjoy it as much as I did. I read it from my book club, so hopefully when I'm able to go next week, I will be able to talk about this one because I really liked it. I then read A Scatter of Light by Melinda Lowe. This is an advanced copy that I got uh, from NetGalley, so thank you very much to the author and the publisher for giving me that. Um, if you don't know, I absolutely love Melinda Lowe's writing. She's read, she's written Huntress, Ash, and most recently Last Night at the Telegraph Club, which is one of my all-time favourite books of the year so far. And A Scatter of Light follows your main character, Ariel, who has had her plans for her summer kind of thwarted. She's just graduated from school and she was supposed to be going and spending time on a vineyard with all her friends, but instead, because of an incident that happens at school towards the end of the year, her parents decide to send her off to go live in California with her grandmother for the summer, where she perhaps won't get into so much, um, you know, trouble as they see it. And while she's there, you know, she wasn't really sure what she was going to be doing for the summer, and then she meets her grandmother's uh, gardener, Steph, and kind of gets invited out with her and her friends a little bit, and she starts to you know, just get to know these girls, get to know who they are, and start to question her sexuality and her growing feelings for Steph. And it's just a really, really lovely story. You know, if you know Melinda Lowe, you know that she just writes these fantastic queer romances, queer sapphic romances, and Scatter of Light is no different. It's just such a lovely story about this girl understanding her own sexuality, understanding her own feelings for Steph. And trying to navigate a very difficult situation where she's in love with some she's falling in love with somebody who is in an established relationship and she doesn't want to ruin that but she at the same time she's you know almost being quite selfish and just trying to follow her own feelings and stuff and it was just a really really interesting dynamic and a really really great story i loved all the characters in this i just think that they're all just so well written the pacing is absolutely fantastic one thing me and this person i was with, with earlier were saying about Melinda Lowe's writing is just that you know last night at the telegraph club and also with scatter of light they're just paced so well and it's just so gentle in the way that you kind of you know go along the story and yeah i just i would i don't i don't know there's just something so calming and relaxing about reading reading these sort of fiction and historical fiction romance books by Melinda Lowe. And yeah, this one was just no different. I just absolutely loved it. I do feel that there was just like a little bit missing in the characterization of Ariel because she's very much science or physics based and stuff, but there's kind of supposed to be the sort of underarching theme of um, art and her kind of deciding to pursue art as well as science. And I feel like, you know, that kind of takes a bit too much of a backbench at times. And I wish that had been explored a little bit more since it does seem to come, become quite important by the end of the book. And you just kind of feel like 
it's got skipped over a little bit too much in favour of this relationship. So I kind of feel like, you know, that maybe just could have been brought into the story a little bit better than it was. But overall, just, again, absolutely adored this book. It's just so good. And yeah, I definitely actually want to think buy a physical copy once it comes out because I love it so much. But anyway, yep, that's everything that I read this month in August. Um, have you read any of these books that I've mentioned? Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of them. Um, if you plan to read any of them, you know, do let me know. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. What did you read in August? Definitely let me know. If you've reached the end of this video, feel free to leave a like and feel free to subscribe. I post one to two videos a week, although as you know, when I'm going to turn time and you go, get quite busy, so that might definitely go down to one. Um, but yeah, definitely feel free to subscribe. I do still post regularly. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.